An article has come out from The Athletic that has some Raptors fans worried that Grady Dick will not be in the team's rotation come next season. So we'll break that possibility down in this video, as well as a report regarding Team Canada basketball, as Jamal Murray may not be suiting up for the team this summer. So we have that and a whole bunch more to cover in this vid. So without further ado, let's jump on the first topic of discussion. First thing we're taking a look at is Grady Dick potentially not being the Raptors rotation. Now, this is something that once the article came out, the headlines, the chatter, Frustrated a lot of Raptors fans, given the fact that a lot of the discourse that has surrounded this team this summer, and a lot of the criticisms that was thrown at former Toronto Raptors head coach Nick Nurse, was that the team needs to focus more on development. It's stuff that's been brought up by Darko Ryakovich, it's been brought up by Masai Ujiri. We need young players to be getting reps, getting opportunities in the Raptor system so they can grow and develop their games. I mean, we have a very young core group, right? The team... Yes, we just lost Fred Van... We still have Pascal Siakam, right? We still have OG Ananobi, who's kind of old, kind of young now at this point in that mid sort of age. But Scotty Barnes, Gary Trent Jr., now Grady Dick, Precious Achua, Christian Coloco. We have a lot of sort of young prospects on this team that are going to need some opportunities in order to grow because the potential is there, but they need to stay out of the Nick Nursery if they're going to actually have a chance at blossoming in the NBA. However, Eric Kareen came out from in an article in The Athletic and broke down the potential Toronto Raptors rotation heading into next season. And, you know, it seems like every summer it feels like the Raptors are loaded with depth. We have a lot of guys on the squad, and then we're going to go into the season and not know what minutes are going to be going around. And, you know, it doesn't usually end up being that way, but Eric Kareen basically put the hierarchy in terms of Toronto Raptors players and had this to say about Grady Dick. DNP coach's decision on most nights would be involved, and the most notable, I'd have to imagine, would be Grady Dick not in the rotation. He's very skinny. He could be put in as an offensive spacing spark, but I can't imagine he heads into training camp ahead of any of the 10 players listed ahead of him. And a few of the names that were sort of above him in the rotation from what Eric Kareen listed included Jalen McDaniels, Chris Boucher, Precious Achua, Dennis Schroeder, all the guys coming off the bench, and then our projected starting unit, you know, with guys like Scotty Barnes, OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, Jakob Pertl, and Gary Trent Jr. So that's sort of the, the team, the construction, the hierarchy of the group. And in fact, Otto Porter Jr. is also looked at as a guy that's just in the deep bench below Grady Dick and sort of the rotation, which I think is a little bit interesting because I know we dealt with a lot of injuries last season, barely played whatsoever. But a healthy Otto Porter Jr. is a guy that started on a championship team just two years ago. So he's another player that you have to factor in as a potential rotation guy. And you look at this team, as we do pretty well every summer going into a Raptor season, you say, hey, there's some depth there. It feels like there's some depth there. You know, it doesn't, players don't live up to expectations. There's all these types of things that happen. But regardless of what happens with Grady Dick, it would be a massive mistake for this team not to have him in the rotation come the start of this year. Firstly, because young guys, young players, you don't want to kill their confidence on day one, especially shooters coming to the NBA. They need to be able to come in day one and get their reps up. All the training that they have in training camp, you know, you don't want to absolutely crush their confidence, ruin their sort of flow as soon as they enter the NBA. Because young shooters, you know, if they don't get their reps, they might go the route of a Matt Thomas. And, you know, a year into the league, they say, okay... I'm only going to get minimal opportunities here, so I'm not going to force anything or I'm not going to take my looks. Or when I do get a shot on this possession, I'm going to think about it, overthink about it, the possession before, and hoist up some garbage. And that's just what happens with shooters. So having Grady Dick just be benched, a coach's decision DNP game after game would be an insane mistake for a lottery talent. This isn't some project, some prospect that we're trying to develop in the 905, the G League, all this type of stuff. We took Grady Dick in the lottery. He fell to us at the 13th overall pick. I mean, he's a guy that showed out in Summer League, proved that he's more than just a three-point shooter. So to risk killing his confidence on day one of NBA you know, action, it doesn't really make sense in my view. And he fills a direct need for this Raptors squad. What was the biggest issue for this Toronto Raptors team last season? Shooting. Right, Our current core group, especially with Fred VanVleet gone now at this point, I know a lot of people love to criticize Fred VanVleet's high-volume sort of style of offense and hoisting up shots and all that type of stuff, but he was one of our better three-point shooters you know, on the roster last season, even if he wasn't that efficient, but him being out of the lineup now 
You have Jakob Pertl out there as a high-minute getter on this Raptors team. Scotty Barnes that hasn't proven himself as a three-point shooter just yet. Pascal Siakam that's inconsistent. OG Ananobi can definitely knock him down as an open floor spacer, but hasn't proven the ability to you know create for himself. Gary Trent Jr. is really the only guy it feels like on this roster that you know off the dribble can create those threes, those step backs, those tough contested shots, and then off the bench as well. Precious isn't much of a three-point shooter. Boucher is remarkably inconsistent. Dennis Schroeder is not a guy that's looked as a, you know, a splash brother or anything along those lines. So it's, we don't have a lot of shooting. We don't have a lot of these guys. So Grady Dick's going to be, his best skill is the ability to stretch the floor. So him being out there, being able to come off of screens and not just be a one-dimensional shooter. You know, I compared him to Matt Thomas. That was Mr. 99%. You know, the Raptor Splash brother, you know, Clay Thompson comparisons, all those types of stuff. I mean, you know, he does more than him. He's going to be an integral asset into what the Toronto Raptors can do, and they should let him play through his mistakes and do all this type of stuff. So you know, even a Jalen McDaniels who can play more defense than Grady Dick, certainly less consistent from behind the three-point line, Grady Dick needs his minutes for the future of this team, for his own confidence, and for this roster going into next season. So I think it'd be an insane mistake for him to be off or out of the rotation. Heck, I think Otto Porter Jr., if he's healthy, it'd be a mistake for him to be out of the rotation as well. So we'll see how it all shakes out. None of the players in the deep Raptors bench have really lived up to expectations in recent years, so we'll see who blossoms, who doesn't. But hopefully Grady Dick does get an opportunity to play through some rookie struggles and not be benched for months at a time, as we saw with some of the young guys under Nick Nurse. But let me know what you guys think about this whole situation in the comment section down below. Next thing we're taking a look at is a major update regarding Team Canada's FIBA roster, and specifically Jamal Murray. As reporters come out from the Toronto Star and Doug Smith basically saying that Jamal Murray won't travel to Germany for the three pre-World Cup games with Canada, but they hope he's ready to go in games versus Spain in Spain and the tournament. So veteran Corey Joseph is also withdrawn as well as Cassius Robinson, and O'Shea Brissett has a knee issue, so he might not be able to play. So that's four guys in the Canada sort of camp of players that potentially aren't going to be available. And obviously the biggest name there is Jamal Murray coming off an NBA championship and a dominant, dominant playoff performance. He's getting disrespected by 2K. You know, people just underrate the heck out of Jamal Murray, but he is one of the best basketball players in the world, especially at that guard position. And he's really motivated to play for Team Canada. But as a guy that's coming off a torn ACL, played deep into the summer and, uh, you know, winning an NBA championship for the Denver Nuggets, you get that Team Canada doesn't want to overextend his workload, you know, playing in random preseason games in Germany, or sorry, pre-FIBA games, I don't even know what to call them, but, you know, I get that, but for the actual qualifiers, you know, having to face up against a team like France, you want all of your top-tier talent available, ready to go, so hopefully from what other reports and little inklings we've seen, it seems like it's 50-50 in terms of whether or not Jamal Murray will actually suit up for these qualifying tournaments, but man, we really need him. I mean, the Raptors, or sorry, the Team Canada, I always mix up the Raptors and Team Canada whenever we mix these two in Raptors Digest videos, but basically, we're loaded at the guard positions. I mean, Shea Gilgis Alexander's also one of the NBA's best guards, one of the world's best guards, so he can hold it down. We have Lou Dort out there on the roster. Corey Joseph being out does hurt there a little bit, but we got Alexander Walker. We have a lot of players that can sort of fulfill that guard depth. The forward positions are areas where R.J. Barrett as well. Can't forget the whole squad here at this point. But we actually have the full roster here. Basically, we can read off. Kevin Pangos is another dude that could potentially get into the mix. Dylan Brooks can slide down to the guard spots. But the rap, uh, the Team Canada is pretty, pretty filled at the guard positions. The forwards are where there are more question marks. Right, We do have uh, Dwight Powell, Kelly Olynyk. You know, a few guys at the bigs that have played in the NBA, Melvin Edgem, formerly for the Orlando Magic, he's a guy that does have some experience. Obviously, Brooks and these guys can play up a little bit. Edie is a player that I think I'd be more intrigued by having on the roster now at this point because, you know, it's hard to cut NBA players. That's something that's difficult to do, and there's a lot of guys that have FIBA experience, have all these types of accolades outside the NBA that have the connections to Team Canada and are sort of expected to make this squad. But personally, I think we load up at the guard positions, and then forget the lack of experience. The guy was a, to a dominant force in NCAA action. I don't care if you're worried about guarding the pick and roll and all that type of stuff. With Cassius Robinson out, you know, with Corey Joseph likely out, who knows about Jamal Murray? I think you bring in Zach Eady. Hope Jamal Murray stays. Keep him on the roster, and then, you know, run it from there. 
have your big rotation be Edie, Kelly Olynyk, and uh, Dwight Powell. Then have all of our All-NBA quality guards there at the guard positions. And then this Team Canada team can be pretty, pretty nasty. I mean, regardless of Jamal Murray plays and not or not, I sort of discussed it. Shea in the backcourt, RJ Baird in the backcourt, Lou Dort there. Then Kelly Olynyk, Dwight Powell's in your sort of front court. Dylan Brooks getting some run. You know, a seven-foot-plus monster and Edie down there in the paint. Right, this... Team Canada team is looking like one of the best squads we've ever seen sued up for Team Canada. We don't even have Wiggins. We don't even have a guy like Chris Boucher. And we don't even have the youngins like uh, Benedict Mathurin and uh, Shaden Sharp suiting up either. So future is bright for Team Canada, but hopefully Jamal Murray suits up for this uh, action in FIBA you know, come this summer so the Team Canada can qualify for the Olympics because that will be huge to, to get to watch and something I'd like to go to, honestly, see Team Canada fight in the Olympics. But final thing we're discussing in this video is uh, Serge Ibaka speaking out on old Toronto, and he had some uh, nice words, some nice comments regarding a... Uh, just Toronto in general in an uninterrupted interview just said, after four years, every time I come back here, people still make me feel like it was yesterday. And just overall in the interview, Serge Ibaka just always embracing the city. Now, I know he's older. I know he's a guy that probably is a little bit washed. But even talking to Bucks fans, you know, he's a bit step slower, certainly, on the defensive end. But still could have given quality minutes from the Bucks fans I've heard from. Didn't get to see much of Serge Ibaka, especially his most recent year, dealing with injuries and all that. But I don't know. Was a guy that I'd like to see the Toronto Raptors just bring back. I mean, we picked up Garrett Temple to be a veteran in the locker room and all that sort of stuff. Why not bring back Serge Ibaka at the end of the bench at that sort of contract to hype up the guys, especially the young bigs that we have rolling there? I don't know. Serge Ibaka just feels like a a culture Toronto Raptor, right? Championship sort of era. The Marcus Souls, Norman Powell's, those were, those were all real Toronto Raptors culture guys. So I don't know. We'd like to see him back, but shout out to Serge Ibaka. Throwing some uh, praise to Toronto, Canada, everyone out there. But, folks, you guys are the best for making this far. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. It means the world to me. We are very, very close to 30,000 subscribers. I know the news is slowing down a bit after the whirlwind of an off season that we've had this year. But still means the world for you guys to hit that sub button. Anyways, you guys are the best. I'm signing out. Cheers.